Senator Chris Coons. He is a member of the Foreign Relations Committee. He's also a close ally to President Biden. Um, I I'm wondering, let's talk first about oil, because that is one way that it appears the U.S. may be stepping up here. Are we going to see the White House announce that they are done with Russian energy? Likely, yes, Brianna. I don't know if that'll be today or tomorrow. Um, but two things, if I could, up front about banning Russian oil and gas from the American market. It's a fairly small percentage of the energy coming into the United States, but it's critical for Western Europe. The strength of our sanctions, of the costs we're imposing on Putin uh, for this brutal invasion of Ukraine, are more successful and more sustainable when they're coordinated. So I respect the fact the administration is coordinating with our European allies and making sure that we've done the groundwork to understand how to effectively implement a ban on Russian energy. I support the initiative by Senators Manchin and Murkowski. Um, there are Republicans and Democrats in Congress calling for this, and I expect the administration to continue its forceful leadership on imposing costs on Russia. Okay, so you're expecting that that's what the administration is going to do, say no to Russian energy. But look, to your point, it only accounts for 8% of U.S. energy. I think it's 3% of America, of the crude that America consumes. So it's not that much. You recently traveled to Germany, where it is a much bigger fraction of their energy uh, consumption. You were there with the congressional delegation. They're not on board with this. Will the White House do this without Europe, and can they? Look, first, we have to be working in close consultation with our European allies, and we have to provide support for their transition to renewables and for the temporary but urgent need they're going to have to replace Russian gas with other sources. Fortunately, the United States is a major producer of LNG, uh, and I'm meeting with a Republican colleague right after this interview to talk about how we can find a path forward that is both climate ambitious in terms of renewables and uses American energy to buttress our critical allies. Brianna, this conflict is going to go on for a while, and we need to be able to sustain our Western allies and to support the people of Ukraine. I'm working hard to secure $10 billion in additional humanitarian aid for Ukraine and Ukrainian refugees. We're less than two weeks into this war, and there's already two million refugees flooding into countries like Poland and Hungary and Romania that need our support. Your viewers this morning, many of them are wondering, what can I do to help Ukrainian refugees? You can feel proud that the American people are going to step forward and provide critically needed support, both military support for the Ukrainian resistance and humanitarian support uh, for food and housing and health care for the millions of refugees who will be pouring out of Ukraine in the coming weeks. Uh, you, you're aware, just to, to touch back again on oil, that Russia is threatening to completely cut off energy sales, which would be something to yes. behold. And Russia is th saying that oil, which of course is priced globally, so even though the U.S. only gets a, a smidge of Russian energy, it doesn't necessarily matter, that it could hit $300 a barrel. For comparison, it's less than half that right now, and gas is at $4 a gallon. Do you think that could happen? Yes. Uh, I think it's important to realize that both Republicans and Democrats here in Congress are pushing and pushing urgently for us to ban Russian gas and oil. We have to realize that it's a global integrated market, as you just put it. It is tough to turn on the taps and increase production quickly. It's not like phoning up Amazon and saying, deliver this tomorrow. And we are going to see increased gas prices here in the United States. In Europe, they will see dramatic increases in prices. That's the cost of standing up for freedom and of standing alongside the Ukrainian people, but it's going to cost us, and I'm already getting calls from Delawareans concerned about high gas prices. We yeah. need to see the cost and benefit here. To that end, the Biden administration officials uh, there are approaching Venezuela, which is sort of uh, maybe not someone that the U.S. wants to be associated with, but nonetheless they are maybe looking to Iran to make up a possible gap in sales of Russian oil. Do you support that? Look, I know that they are talking to our close ally and our largest source uh, of oil and gas, that's Canada, uh, as well as to American producers and other countries around the world. Um, I think there are good reasons to explore conversations uh, with Iran about their nuclear program, with Venezuela, about human rights and the American hostages they're holding. 
um, but I think we should start by focusing on Canada and the United States. Uh, but frankly, we are going to be in a global energy crisis. As you just said, Brianna, we might well see energy prices double because Putin realizes he's got Western Europe over a barrel. This is his single greatest conventional weapon, non-military weapon that he can use to push back the West and to divide us. It's the weapon he used after he invaded Crimea in 2014 to dissuade our European partners from joining us in tougher sanctions. I expect him to use it, and I expect that will make energy prices spike, and I think there will be a genuine race to produce more around the world. I think you have a lot of people's attention with the picture that you just painted. Senator Coons, thank you so much for being with us this morning. Thank you, Brianna.